Let's jump to this story here from the New York Post. Las Vegas official accused of killing reporter will remain in office what? and get paid. What? Okay. So this is a Democrat. Hmm. And he's there wearing some kind of, what is that, a clean suit or bio something? Mask. Bio, yeah. bio mask? It's a smock. Yeah. So uh, this guy has been it's arrested, Dexter. innocent until proven guilty, charged with the murder. I, he's arrested on, the, on murder suspicion of a journalist who was, who was covering, do, running hit pieces. And so this guy, they find his DNA at the scene. That, that, that's, that's, what, that's what happened, right, Olivia? I want that's to make correct. sure. Yes. Yes. They find his they DNA at the scene. DNA. He's been arrested. And he's still in office. He's still getting paid. He's wearing a Dexter suit when this reporter <laughs> runs into him. What is going on here? So uh, how many people do you know get to keep their jobs when they go to jail for murder? When they're arrested and charged awaiting trial? Well, well, well Tim, we also have to understand <laughs> that, you know, politicians murder people all the time and they get away with it. Like, like, do, do you understand what happens behind the seat of power? Like, this is like, just the one time you saw it. Did you see the wars that they started? Did you see the drone bombs that they sent over? Hey. I mean, if, if this guy's going to go to jail, Barack Obama right now, turn yourself in for the assassination <laughs> of uh, Anwar Anawawaki and his son and a 16-year-old American citizen that was executed by you personally when you signed off on the order to kill an American 16-year-old child. <laughs> And so, he got to stay in office. He too, got huh? to stay in office. He got a government <laughs> yeah, paycheck. So yeah. you know, why should this guy get kicked out of office? Yeah. Government. O- Obama killed yeah. an American kid. Yeah, yeah. literally killed a yeah. 16-year-old American citizen, Abdurrahman al I love saying that as often as possible. Yeah. And this is not the first time. I mean, I mean, presidents have started conflicts, have started wars, have started even you know done actions that have led to the end of many people's lives. I uh, just, yeah. I would love to see Obama turning himself in to the Las Vegas police, and it'd be like. Well, if he's going, I guess so am I. Yep. And he it was walks a nu- in and they just lock him up and throw him in a cell. And it was a number of American citizens. It wasn't just one. Yeah, I think it, uh, was, it was. It was around seven to, to eight. The number is still unknown because there there was a lot of covert ops surrounding a lot of these actions. But but essentially, Barack Obama literally signed off on a lot of these executions that without a judge, without a trial, without a jury, executed American citizens yeah. and killed them. Sure and did. that's the power that he Shoot. gave Donald Trump. Donald Trump uh, made sure that the, the accounting and records of it wasn't public, and he gave the power to the Pentagon to make these decisions, and he made he had, sure that the records weren't public. Trump had too much faith in the military. He really revered these guys, yeah, and did. boy, did that screw him yeah. over in a lot of ways, especially with those who lied to him about Syria. But um, was it was a collateral murder? Was that Bush? That was Bush, right? I believe that was Bush and, and uh, Chelsea Manning. Uh, that released that footage was but, that, but is that true? the footage I'm wondering I think I think it might have been under Bush I'm not sure it might have been under Obama because I think that was released in like 2010 wasn't but it? but happened under I mean it was under old Bush. video footage right. but happened under Bush yeah. right, right right the reason I bring that up is I thought it was Bush because it just shows you how these powers get passed down yep. yeah. that Obama is promising you all the bells and whistles and then you know he gets in he kills people all the same so uh, you know what throwing it back to this story about this guy in Vegas um, Luke is right like, are we now going to change our policies? I'm surprised this guy actually got charged. I suppose, I, I, I don't know. Honestly, what's the, what's the difference, really? Barack Obama signed off on a drone strike on a civilian restaurant in Yemen, a country we were not at war with, and he blew up a 16-year-old American citizen who had committed no crimes. So I just, I got to wonder, like, that to me is actually worse for a few reasons. First of all, he killed a child. Second of all, he killed, he blew up a civilian restaurant firing missiles into countries who aren't at war with. I'm like, man, it just compounds and so much worse. And then it's also just like, you know, I, I understand it's not as, as important, but the tens of millions of dollars it costs to do that. Yeah. Now you're stealing our money too. And this guy, this guy gets gets arrested. Yeah. Mm. The first thing thinking about this story, because this was a very interesting story. I actually tweeted about this journalist passing away because he was an investigative journalist. He was also one of the few journalists that was actually correctly investigating the Las Vegas shooting, which a lot of people have totally forgot about, mm-hmm. yeah, that, which we that, still that don't have an explanation. Went, right? yeah. Yeah. That came and went. We still don't have an official explanation to exactly what happened in Las Vegas during that during this mass shooting event that, of course, it has so many people pushing for, for gun control. But, but more 
more importantly, I originally thought maybe this was somehow connected. I, I, I put this story out before the politician was even connected to this story. But the politician who is accused of killing him was also caught by this journalist cheating on his wife. This journalist ended his political career. He, he was a high profile Democrat in Las Vegas. Uh, but, but automatically hearing this story, I, I thought about what Bill Clinton said about uh, House of Cards. If you remember uh, House of Cards, it was a famous Netflix show with yeah. Kevin Spacey, friends of all friends with, of course, Jeffrey Epstein. But but Bill Clinton said that that House of Cards was 99% real. Wow. Huh. And in House of Cards, the president assassinates a journalist and right. kills them. Yeah. Yeah. Kevin Spacey wow. kills them. So so that, that automatically makes me think of this. There's a lot of things happening behind the seat of power that we still don't know about. There's there's this meme with an iceberg showing the corruption that we know that we know about and then the corruption that we don't know about being this huge piece of ice underneath the the, the water and I think this is the current reality that we're dealing with and w- if we would know exactly what politicians the really sinister the really bad ones were up to we would be shocked and I, I don't I think it would t- change our whole political landscape immediately I, I do think that Trump was very different from Obama and from Bush I certainly think he made mistakes in who he trusted, but I, I I actually think Trump was an outsider. I think they didn't expect him to win. I think he did want to end the wars. I think he made a bunch of mistakes. I think he signed off on a bunch of bad orders. But uh, you look at how hard they're going after him. He did sign the Abraham Accords. Mm-hmm. He did try and bring peace, say, you know, North Korea and, and crossing into the DMZ and things like that. And I know a lot of people, they don't they don't think it's enough. You know, we had Dave Smith on the show and Maj Teray last week, and Dave said he's still doing bad. And so that shouldn't be the standard. So, you know, my view is just like someone super chatted this. I'll throw it to them instead. They said this problem was created over 100 years. You're not going to solve it in 100 days. You can't expect one president to come in and then just snap their fingers and just end all of the really, really bad, awful stuff right. we've been but doing. But why does that have to be the president? Because when I, you know, I see stories like this, like, you know, where are all the men at? Yeah. Yeah. Like, where are the men in our government? You know, if you look at, you know, Trump's presidency, if you're just taking that as a litmus test, is like you had an investigation the entire time he was president. So how is it that his political enemies were able to roll out Mueller and the things that were going on with Russia, the things that were going on? Um, how are they able to have a nonstop investigation, nonstop uh, political power like where where are the men that are constitutional? Where are the American men to stand up to this type of stuff? Not in politics. Yeah. Well, it's it's just interesting because I think what made Trump so appealing to everybody was that he had balls. Yeah. That that he got on TV and he spoke his mind and talking about you know his growth in the black community is is like that resonated with 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 black America is that you had a man a masculine man that got on TV DeSantis has that as well yeah but all the rappers loved Donald Trump Donald they've Trump always, was all uh, was no, up in all the music Trump. videos yeah but it's like you know you see this going on in Las Vegas it's like is there no men is yeah. there no any like who do we have in the senate right now I mean, you know, you see these little clips where it's like, oh, Ted Cruz roast so and so or whatever, but it's like, no, like you're not. You're just, you're just, you know, you're 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 playing a part. But you know, our country is headed in a downward spiral. Like, where are the men? Like, yeah, it's all theatrics. I mean, and in, in Washington D.C., I mean, there's no real, you know, I'm not. I'm not bought and paid for by any politician. So it's like I can I can criticize them from a in an objective way as a citizen of the United States. But it's like all the politicians who are on their so-called Republican side, uh, many of them are themselves corrupt. At least they demonstrate that. I mean, if you look at what they're saying on Twitter and what their actual voting record is, many of them are no different than the people on the other side of the aisle. And so to the extent that it comes to uh, standing up for true law and order, I mean, it, the inscription on the Supreme Court uh, uh, building is literally, you know, equal justice under the law, but they're not applying that. You know what I mean? And so there's no there's no real uh, men who who love this country or are fighting for the con- the Constitution of these United States in the senate or in the congress like how is there a non-stop investigation on trump like where, like is there no one on the but, other side to, like do i mean are is no one curious about some of the things on the other side like where like yeah. when is so you know well, well, you got to go vote 57 yeah. days i think it is yeah. is that what we're at 57 yeah vote yeah 
voting voting will do so much but i mean hopefully there will be some men that will step up and but the thing is too like people have to kind of get it out of their head that the only election that matters is the president of the united states you know what i mean yeah and, and that being said too some men but i gotta i kind of feel like marjorie taylor green is going to be the one who actually goes heavy into the investigations and stuff there are some women who uh, uh carrie yeah carrie lake of yeah Arizona. oh yeah i'm liking Lake's her great. Yeah. Yeah, she uh she's been supportive of our of our recent project. So I mean, you know, when I say men, I'm just saying like men that, you know, will stand up and like we need some masculine energy, some truth, you know. You have these little glimpses of it, but it's just it just my it's just mind blowing that, you know, non stop investigations, committees, you know, government spending on investigating. I mean, you're using taxpayer dollars to basically, you know, uh grab power for yourself and, and and i'm just longing for the day and i think again like that's what was so cool about trump yeah you know love him or hate him it's like it was just cool to see a man on tv you know flip the bird at the media it was just yeah. cool it was cool to you know you know i remember those you press fake conference. news <laughs> yeah i remember the press yeah. conferences like how exciting i remember like kicking like oh my goodness like i've never you know, it, it made me uncomfortable because I hadn't even been conditioned to seeing just weak yeah. politicians. But all, all Republican politics is these days is basically placating the left uh, to try to, you know, in a sense, play it safe so as to come to some kind of common ground to keep some remnants of things as they were. Yeah. That's yeah. basically what Republican politics is. There is no uh, uh, true kind of intentionality in terms of preserving the republic of the united states i mean you literally had the president of the united states talking about we need to preserve our democracy and a lot of people have it in their head that america is a democracy like nobody challenged him in terms of the mainstream media of like well no actually we're not a democracy we're a Demo we're a, a constitutional republic like nobody checked him on that and so it's, it's a problem but to but you know back to the story about you know this politician who will you know keep their position who will continually get paid um, this is, in a sense, like the same thing that has been going on in terms of, you know, politicians being above the law. They are an elitist class. And, you know, we are expected as citizens to kind of go along with it. Yeah. yeah. You made so, a good point just really quickly. The, the Republicans now have almost the same policies as the Democrats nearly had 10 years ago. And it's almost the same exact thing that they're just vying for. So I especially agree with you. I don't have a lot of hope in voting, but when it comes to the men, I think a lot of them have been sterilized. I think a lot of them have been chemically castrated. And I, I think there also is a bigger spiritual and health fight happening that is affecting our current landscape that I think is also worth talking about. Definitely. Yeah. We are at spiritual. We are in spiritual war right now. Yeah. Thanks for checking out this segment from the Timcast IRL podcast. But if you want to check out the full show live, tune in Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. And if you want more special access content, head over to Timcast.com and become a member. Your membership helps sustain this company, keep our journalists employed, makes this show happen, and you will get access to exclusive members-only segments of the Timcast IRL podcast. And there's a massive library to check out. So again, go to Timcast.com or tune in Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. And we'll see you all there.